you're going to need your 2A workbook, some blank paper for guided practice, a pencil and a partner. Now, we're not going to start off by marking our work from yesterday because we're moving on to a new topic. But I'm going to post the answers at the end of the video. If you do want to mark them, then you can use your work from yesterday for that. We're going to start off with some vocabulary that we'll need in this unit. So our unit is temperature. Temperature means how hot or how cold something is. I've put some pictures here of different ways to measure temperature. We've measured things before like length, time, money, Measuring means finding out exactly how much of something there is. So when we use these ways of measuring temperature, we're finding exactly how hot or cold something is. Have a look carefully at the pictures. Have you ever seen these measures in real life or have you ever used any of them? Pause the video and have a chat to your partner. Now, have a look. This is Emma in her kitchen and there are a few different things around the room to do with temperature. So here you're going to have a chat with your partner. You're going to think about what in this picture do you think would feel cold? What would feel hot? Can you spot any tools in the room to help measure temperature? And maybe you have some sensible advice for Emma about what she should touch or what she shouldn't touch. You can pause the video here to chat to your partner. Well done. I bet you've already been using lots of vocabulary to do with temperature with chatting to your partner. Here I've got some more pictures of ways to measure temperature and this time I've included photos because you might recognise some of these from at home or from school. They all show different thermometers and the word thermometer has two important parts to it. Thermo, which means to do with temperature, sort of like if you ever wear thermal socks or a thermal vest in the winter when it's cold. Thermo means to do with temperature and meter means measure. Not like meters and centimeters that we used when we were measuring length. They're similar but this type of meter is spelt differently and it's a noun to do with measuring. So you might have a smart meter at home. That's this white object up at the top here. This is a smart meter that lots of people have in their homes now. So meter means measure. Put them together, thermometer, we pronounce it thermometer, and it's a tool we use to measure temperature. Have a look at these photos and see if you can remember seeing any of them either at home or in school or at a friend's house and have another chat to your partner. Today and for the rest of the unit, we're going to focus on a type of thermometer called a mercury thermometer. This is a picture of one here. It's usually made of glass, so it's usually quite delicate. There are two important things we need to know about a mercury thermometer. First of all, it has a scale. That's these numbers and little lines going up the side. That's called the scale. And if you look very carefully, you can spot a C up at the top. We'll explain that later. It's a very important letter for temperature. The other important thing a mercury thermometer has is mercury. Mercury is a chemical and in this thermometer here, it's liquid, a bit like water. It's often red or silver, but it can be different colors. And when the mercury gets hot, it expands or gets bigger. 
If you have a look at this video here, it will show you a short demonstration of somebody using a mercury thermometer to measure different temperatures of water. When we are measuring temperature, we use a unit called degrees Celsius. You might remember from length, we use meters and centimeters. In time, we use seconds and minutes and hours and days and weeks and months and years. In money, we use pennies and pounds. For temperature, we'll only be using one unit to measure, and that is degrees Celsius. There are some very important degrees in degrees Celsius. Number, well, the first one we'll look at is zero degrees Celsius. Zero degrees Celsius is the temperature at which water turns to ice. So if you put something in the freezer, if it has water in it, the water will turn to ice at zero degrees Celsius. The next temperature is an estimate. It's not exactly right, it's around about right. And that's room temperature. We say that room temperature is about 20 degrees Celsius. That can change depending on the weather outside, if there's a window open, if there's a radiator on, how many people are in the room, but most rooms are usually around 20 degrees Celsius. Sometimes that changes, for example silk classroom is usually a little bit cooler than velvet classroom because of the direction our windows face. Velvet classroom faces towards the sun more and silk class faces towards Belland and Road more so we get more of a breeze. I like to keep our classroom a little bit cooler than 20 degrees because I keep the window open a crack unless it's very cold to try and get a breeze in. But a strange fact about silk classroom is that even though I keep the classroom a little bit cooler than this, usually about 18 degrees, even despite that, we still often have lots of cardigans left on the floor or left on pegs at the end of the day. It's a very strange mystery about silk classroom. I'm not sure if it's the same in velvet. Another important temperature for us to know in degrees Celsius is 37 degrees Celsius. Again, this is an estimate, it's not exactly right, but at around about 37 degrees Celsius is a healthy body temperature. When we're feeling healthy and strong, if you took your temperature, it would read about 37 degrees Celsius. It might be a little bit higher or a little bit cooler. If our temperature goes much higher than 37 degrees, we have a temperature or a fever and we will need some medicine or something else to help us cool it down. If our temperature is much lower than 37 degrees, we have something called hypothermia and we definitely need to see a doctor. At 100 degrees Celsius, water starts to boil. That means it starts bubbling and turns into steam, the gas that floats up in the air. So at zero degrees Celsius, water turns to ice, freezes. At 100 degrees Celsius, water turns to steam or boils. We also use temperature when we're cooking or baking and often a recipe will tell us to cook or bake something at around about 180 degrees. I can't show you that on these pictures of thermometers because these pictures only go up to 100 degrees Celsius and that's very hot. So imagine how hot an oven would be at 180 degrees Celsius. I know that you all already know not to touch boiling water like a kettle, not to touch a hot oven. But now that you know that your body is usually only about 37 degrees Celsius, you can see why it's so dangerous to touch boiling water or to touch a hot oven. 100 and 180 and temperatures even higher than that are much, much hotter than your body normally is. 
Reading thermometers, particularly mercury thermometers, can be a bit tricky. To do it, we look at where the mercury line stops. I explained that mercury gets bigger when it gets hot, so it travels up or across the thermometer. We read exactly where that line stops. Here, it's quite easy to read because the line stops at about 20. So that's why Ruby says it reads about 20 degrees Celsius. We don't have to write the words degrees Celsius each time though. We can write 20 and then a small circle up in the air and then a capital letter C, 20 degrees Celsius. If you think back to our spelling yesterday in Skills Builders, you'll probably remember that Celsius has a soft C. It makes a s sound Celsius. So we just write the letter C. Sometimes reading a thermometer isn't that easy. If you look at the thermometer Charles is reading, we can see it stops hmm, somewhere past 60, but there isn't a number. There are just these small lines. So we don't know exactly what number it has stopped at, but we can estimate. That means we can make a sensible guess. It has to be somewhere between 60 and 70. It's not exactly in the middle of 60 and 70 here. In fact, it's not that much further past 60 at all. So Charles has estimated that it reads about 62 degrees Celsius. Just like when we looked at 20 degrees Celsius, we can write it with 62, the number, then a small circle for degrees and a capital C for Celsius. Now, this is a question to really check who's been listening. On the last slide, I told you some important temperatures in degrees Celsius. Now, with these two thermometers at 20 degrees Celsius and 62 degrees Celsius, I've got a challenge. One of these thermometers shows the temperature of a hot cup of tea and one shows the temperature of a glass of water at room temperature. Can you work with your partner to figure out which thermometer is which? So which of these two thermometers showing these two temperatures is for a glass of water or a hot cup of tea? You can pause the video to chat to your partner. Well done if you remembered that 20 degrees Celsius is around about room temperature. So a glass of water at room temperature will measure about 20 degrees Celsius. A hot cup of tea would probably be around 62 degrees Celsius. Very hot. For your guided practice, I have given you six thermometers for you to read and write down what temperature in degrees Celsius you think they show. Some of them go exactly to a number. Some of them you will have to do some estimating. I'll show the answers on the next slide. Don't forget to work with a partner. So here are some answers we were estimating. So not all of these have to be exactly right. The first one was 40 degrees Celsius. We can see it goes exactly to the line for 40. This one shows 100 degrees Celsius. It goes right to the top to the line for 100. I wonder if you can also remember what happens at 100 degrees Celsius. That's very important. Well done if you remembered that that is the temperature that water boils or turns to steam. Question C, this thermometer shows 30 degrees Celsius. D, this thermometer shows 80 degrees Celsius. E, this thermometer shows mm, about 5 degrees Celsius. And F, this thermometer shows about 45 degrees Celsius. 
E and F were particularly hard to read. So don't worry if you said something similar to 5 or similar to 45. For your independent work today, we are setting you four pages today because there aren't many questions on each. We're setting you pages 215 to 218. Don't forget to write the date on top. Today is the 5th of the 5th, 20. That's the fifth day of the fifth month in the year 2020. Some of the pictures are a bit tricky to read. So remember, we doesn't, our answers don't need to be exact. We can use the word about. And make sure you read the instructions for each question carefully, because some of them are asking you to do slightly different things. We've got three challenges today. You can continue on in your workbook and do page 219. That one asks you to read some thermometers, but also compare them then. This challenge asks you to look at these two different thermometers and write down one thing that is the same about them and one thing that is different. Or you could do this challenge, which has Luna and Nora. They're both looking at two thermometers as well. Each of them says what they think is a correct statement about them. You have to choose who you agree with and explain why. On the next few slides, I'm going to show the answers to the questions from yesterday if you want to mark them. Good luck with your work.